tried to register africahacker.com and he didn't do it he, he, he forgot <laughs> repeat it please he was the, the first person tasked to register africahacker.com I, yeah, uh, my day. <laughs> that is awesome. <laughs> anyway, sorry. Labu, back to you. All right. Uh, good evening, everyone. Uh, thank you for joining this session. Uh, it's uh, day nine of 100 Days of Hacking. And with us, we have uh, Mr. Frederick Wahome, who is uh, represent who uh, runs a cybersecurity firm in Kenya and is also a, a senior member and committee member of Kenya Cybersecurity Forensics Association. Personally, I've known Fred uh, as a teacher. He, he's the one who actually taught me um, how to start Metasploit. <laughs> so that's, the, that's how long ago we've known each other. We've known each other for quite some time. And he's been doing a lot of uh, amazing stuff in the cybersecurity scene. So for today's session, uh, he will be taking us through soft skills. So it's not going to be a very practical session. It's going to be more about the other facets that uh, one needs to be a practitioner in this field. Because not only do you need to have the cybersecurity skills in terms of technical skills, but you also need to be able to communicate effectively with people. And I, I believe Fred has prepared something for us today to go into the soft skill side and better ourselves. So with that, I would like to hand the floor to Mr. Frederick Wahome. Wow, thank you, thank you. C can you hear me, guys? Yes, we can. It's The floor is yours. Wow. So when you have a, a doctor, you have another, another doctor in meeting, so you may you may have to behave when you are speaking because uh, you may speak something that uh, is out of context. But I thank you guys. Seriously now? Thank you guys. Thank you team. It is an honor and a privilege actually uh, to share this uh, platform together as a team. And I'm also proud uh, having come a long way. It has been uh, really a journey. Uh, some years just learning, going through challenges, you know. And uh, now we are here, and we are also trying to capacity build each others, uh, because this is more of a journey of continuous uh, improvement. Uh, personally, uh, I, I have I have evidence of growth when I look ten years ago, and. Um, when I look at where I am today, I can say that uh, I have somehow I have grown. But well, <clears throat> we are still continuing to grow. Um, Akina, Dr. Bright, you know, uh, Labu, those years, I remember. And it's such an honor and a privilege that you are still here. And the success of the industry as a career. Uh, is more more debates uh, on the on the unity uh, of the team and it's such a good thing that we are here today uh, and also uh, the today's session I had requested to handle something on soft skills uh, because we have we have had much on the technical part of it interaction with shells interaction with servers all those things but now, how about if, if we try to explore the other side of it, where you will be surprised that it, you know, uh, it plays a major role uh, as, as we grow in the career. And part of it, I have applied at a personal level. If you look at someone like uh, Polycarp, Polycarp Wigadi, the one who was deputy governor, you can, you can, you can be surprised, you know, how comes he, he switches jobs from days he's headhunted he is you know there must be apart from the technical skill on his area of expertise he must be he must be good in something that uh, has to do with soft skill maybe his negotiation skill <clears throat> interaction with people uh, dealing with people how he speak to people uh, 
you know, how he interacts with customers. And that's why you can see that he moves from this job to the other. And also someone else who is coming up uh, very well. I, I believe he's not going to uh, to whip me. He's also Dr. Bright. I want to comment him. Uh, you know, I have been observing him and um, I can see that in the next few years, uh, he will also be a force to record, not only in Kenya, but also in Africa. And of course, all of us here. And um, <clears throat> my intention was to just share because most of us, we are already growing in our careers. And uh, there are those who maybe are starting uh, at one point. Others are in a point, at a point where they, they, they need to transit maybe to another area, another dimension of cyber security, maybe forensics, uh, maybe technology, uh, maybe leadership. Like for me on my part, I have been focusing a lot on, on leadership because uh, I know in the next few years, uh, I might not be so much into the technical part of it. It has not been an easy journey. And this is where I have I had to internalize so much when it comes now to the soft skill. I have seen people very technical. They can do shells, they can do remote, all those things. But now their, their attitude is, is very stinking. When you spend some time with them, arrogance, pride. And I have seen it, you know, I have interacted with people. They are very extremely smart. But now, uh, dealing with people, working with people, when is it the last time that you, you, you told someone sorry? As, as, as simple as that. I have seen young people uh, that we are mentoring, you know, get into jobs very afresh but now they start dating you know? and before you know it um they are fighting you know they are fired and these are the small small things that we need to uh to educate our young people in as much we we, we also uh teach them on the technical skills it is also important because uh these soft skills they complement and for you to move from one level to the other, actually, as you keep growing, the more you are growing older, the more you are maturing in the industry, the more you come to realize that actually soft skill is what is going to take you far. So you are, you are, you are skilled to negotiate your way into uh, the next level, um, you know, problem solving. Like now, we have seen... Um, most of the young people, we run a fad, it's called Cyber Self, which is about one year old. Basically, we just look for young people <clears throat> who have innovation, and our main key focus is in cyber security. So if they have um, a cyber security innovation, then we can be able now to, uh, to take up that from um, a, an age of investment perspective, where we do not a take of any ownership within um, their, their innovation. And one of the key skills that we have seen come out very well is the problem solving skill. It is a very rare commodity. So most of us, we have studied, we have learned. But now when it comes to an environment where um, you are faced with a difficult situation, like I remember about five years ago, we, we were engaged somewhere and um, an IBM DB2 um, database had been breached, but we had not interacted with IBM databases. And this is a, a terminal database running on a Unix platform. And um, we really struggled, but one skill that helped me is the, the problem solving, where we are problem solvers basically. When we conduct the pen test, we are just trying to identify, are there any problems? then how can we now come up with a solution? So from there, um, we have emotional intelligence. I'm going to share my PowerPoint in just a few. Um, so when you come to emotional intelligence, it is coming up as one of the very critical success factor for many people who are already progressing in their career, irrespective of the level that you are at. 
For instance, how empathetic are you to your team? And even as you start maybe uh, in the industry, how well do you interact with each other? Let's say some of us, um, we are introvert. Some of us, extroverts. So how does you being an extrovert influence your reaction to the other person? So how do you approach the other person? Do you approach them from extrovert perspective or point of view? Or assuming they are introverts, do you approach them from introvert perspective? So for instance, most of us, we have not yet learned to master our own emotions. And that's why you can see most politicians, when they stand to speak, they are just um, they're just speaking things because they have not learned how to. You can, you can be very surprised that even at age 60, some of these skills, people are still struggling, especially if you know them in your 20s, 30s. You, you will fight them in your 50s and in your 60s. You may think actually it is a very simple thing that we are sharing here, but this is what will, um, will make you make some progress when you are in at 40 50 60. so the ability to the, that ability to uh, to master our emotions for instance <clears throat> getting angry is it bad is it wrong is it right it might be appropriate or maybe inappropriate but what if you are in a corporate environment and uh, you are this person who is very short-tempered. Uh, you, are, you are heading a team in the cyber security, in the IT department, but you know, you are short-tempered. So how, how will this, you know, contribute towards your well-being and how you treat this other person? You are mentoring um, a young lady, for instance, for men. Then you develop some emotions to that young lady. How do you navigate? How, where do you draw the line personally i've heard about an, a number of young people young ladies come and say okay someone was mentoring me then they started this and that uh -huh. okay how how now do i navigate and ensure that i don't destroy the relationship at the same time i don't compromise and this is something that i want to share with us uh, mentors who are in this uh, specific call when we are dealing with young people, especially the young ladies, we just need to be very, very sensitive. Uh, because we may, we may bring in the aspect of emotions. Before you know it, uh, you are dating someone that you are supposed to be, to be mentoring. Before you know it, uh, we are all of our knees, you know, and it's not a, a cool thing actually. So I, I had just to say that you have to forgive me for that. Uh, allow me to share a PowerPoint. It's just a short presentation. And my seniors, you can continue to correct me where you feel I might be lying, I might be of stating something, you can just say, hey, you, you just lie in there. Just a minute. And I'm also happy also to see some of the people that I have had uh, to mentor at one point in time, and uh, they are also now doing well in the industry. I'm not saying that I'm the best. I'm just saying that at times we sacrifice like the way we are sacrificing here. So. Can you see the PowerPoint? Yes. Good, perfect. So 
for just a minute. I usually have a challenge with the Google Meet when it comes to sharing because uh, just a minute. Let me stop sharing and uh, reshare again. So ask yourself as you continue, when did you last apologize to your colleague? Uh, or are you the one who is always right at all times? When did you um, manifest your arrogance last? How about the last time that you manifested your pride where you work? When did you look down upon a young person who asked you maybe a question or maybe for a guidance and maybe you just looked them down upon them? Uh, because these are, these are very key ingredients. So for hard skills, it, they are, it's very possible to acquire the hard skills. There's, there, there's a lot of information out there. A lot of information and knowledge. So someone can just decide to read, to read, to read. But now, when it comes, when it comes to the soft skill, this is something that is already inside of you. <clears throat> so respecting people where you work. Some of us are starting in the career as basic as walking into an interview and before you are told sit down you are already down you know so very basic things by the way very very basic and it doesn't matter how much skilled you are if some of these things will manifest negatively then it might deny you and that that much needed opportunity for growth so someone can spot you within an organization, then they want to move you from this level to the other. But because of your stinking attitude, then it becomes a challenge. And again, if you look at someone like Polika, we can learn something. He is very good in negotiation. He is, he is a very sharp person, meaning that critical thinking is an independent thinker. Unfortunately, for most of us who are in the corporate, somehow um, it becomes a challenge when you want to apply the critical thinking because one of the elements of critical thinking you you need to uh to somehow dispense your independent thinking ability at times you are told this is how the company is going to do this is what you're supposed to do so somehow you may not you may not have that ability to do that but for, 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 for us, um, like we are in, in entrepreneurship, one thing that we have adopted, one, one of the model that we have adopted is to allow our young people that we are working together, we allow them to think independently. So sometimes um, I may ask them, you know, how am I doing? You know, how is my interaction with you? Sometimes they may say, no, you see, you, you, you are speaking loud, you know, we don't like that. So what I do is that I go back, I check inside of myself, I reevaluate myself, by the way, what is it that I'm, I'm doing right? And if you look at, there's this CEO, um, the, the telco, the telco, Mugo Kibati, he's one of the person who actually inspires me a lot. And if you can take time, if of course, if if you know, if you are growing, if you want to get into tech uh, leadership, all those things, just study that guy. He is he is someone who is who has moved from this, from this to this, from this to this. And um, there was a time I had an interaction. There was a time that they wanted to do some funding, some. So I had some interaction with him. And one of the elements that he shared is creativity, uh, problem solving, and critical thinking. Those are some of the elements that he can attribute to much of his success. And he's not even yet 60. So these are some of the people that you can be able to study and just learn something.
so my 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 PowerPoint is still misbehaving, but we are just continuing. By the way, are we learning something, good people? Yes, sir. Doctor, are you there? Absolutely. Yes, yes. You know, I might say something and uh, someone wonders, what is this person saying? So uh, let us continue. Just a minute, just a minute. I may have to share the entire screen. So can you now see the PowerPoint? Yes, we can. Good. So uh, I usually like to share this, uh, the growth mindset, because um, one of the advantage of the soft skills and uh, one of the advantage of, you know, um, like you have shared, the, the soft skill is already inside of you. And what you need is the, the, the right um environment also you need to be guided also there are some soft skills that you need uh ex to be experiential they are not informational they are experiential for instance for you to really be patient and know that you are patient you need to be in a traffic jam then someone of Allah or something like that or for you to know if you are short tempered so someone overlaps, then the next thing that you are doing, F1. So that you, you will understand, okay, okay, there's something inside of me, and it is trying to manifest. So what you do is that you pay keen and close attention. Because one thing that we have, we have, um, have been trained or acquainted to is most of the, the circumstantial... Um, the, the circumstantial things what surround us but now when it comes to internalizing what is already in us we try to disappear we try to run away so if you have an anger issue how can it affect you when you want to move from one career level to the other what if you are given a task by a customer um, let's say forensic or something like that and um, they are the one paying you. But you come to realize that they are actually there. The, the customer is the one who orchestrated maybe the attack. Or we have seen situations where we are told, uh, we know it is the IT person who facilitated the hacking of the database. So already the, the customers are predetermined to cancel before we even start the project. And we find out that the IT person has already been exonerated. So how are you going to navigate that? Remember the customer is the one who is paying you. At the same time, the results, because they are scientific in nature, they do not show any of their interest. And this is where now um, the soft skill comes in. And of course, if you have to develop a growth mindset, the reason we are growing and the reason we are here in this specific um, session is because there are people that are being mentored. I'm also being mentored, even you. And because you have a desire to grow, to become better from this level to the other. And a part of it, a huge chunk happens in the mind. So you have, of course, you have to recalibrate your mind, ensure that your mind is, is right, you know? So if, if you are the person in the corporate and you have, um, um, you know, your boss is this person who yells all over, what are you supposed to do? How is it going to affect first your growth and also your interaction with that person? So I have seen people hate their bosses on the basis of their personality or their personal traits. So someone is, you know, speak loud or all that. Then you hate them because of that. So what happens is that um, you may stagnate where you are. You may stagnate in your environment. So you may not have the space to grow. And 
if you are able to enter it becomes very easy to very very easy to and most of us i know for those of us who are working we may be in those jobs because of fear you feel there's something pushing you to go and start um, a company that does pen test or something like that but what you are doing what is stopping you is just fear fear of unknown another thing some of us we have adopted uh, lifestyles adopted some status quo class then uh, we feel if you are not in this specific uh, job we may lose the status but we are all good um, so very basic and this might not be an, like an academic uh, session. We are just trying to learn a few things. So the soft skill, these are both your character traits and interpersonal. So remember, we also have intrapersonal. So we look at those when you're looking at the emotional intelligence. So you are going to just focus on emotional intelligence, although you have a number of uh, the soft skills. And it, it influences how well a person can work or interact with others. It also covers a wide range of skills. Teamwork. Are you the person who works very well in a teamwork environment? Are you the person who uh, try to, you know, encourage other team members to also grow? I believe as a leader, if you are able to challenge other people to grow, then you are a very excellent leader. But if you're the one who does everything, it shows that you don't even have trust with people that you are working with. And they might, they might not even have that opportunity to grow. So about time management, very key. This is something that I have taken so seriously that when we have we usually have uh, physical mentorship sessions uh, in the office on Saturdays. And um, if there's something that we've been teaching young people is on time. So if you have said that it is starting at 11 on the dot, if they arrive at 11.05, they go back. So it is something that is a culture because as Kenyans, you know, a meeting, then someone will come and laugh and say, okay, you know, there was jam, traffic jam, you know. So those are some of things that you just need to recalibrate yourself. So why is soft skill important? Why is it even a big deal that we are having a session today to discuss uh, about soft skill? <clears throat> so most interaction with other people requires uh, some level of soft skill. Where you are working, uh, you are negotiating for a new position, for a new job, for a new contract, you are presenting your ideas, especially those in cybersecurity, and you have a management, you have a board. So you're gonna you're gonna learn how to negotiate your way, how to influence. If you are a leader in the organization, no matter how many people you are leading, if you're leading one person, two people, you're already a leader. So if you cannot influence and you call yourself a leader, then you have already failed because internally you just need to look inside of yourself there's something wrong somewhere. maybe you are insecure that if this person grows more than me then they might take up some of the rewards that i get in that specific company so we use these soft skills daily and um, it is one way one surest way of accelerating your career from this level to the other yes certificates are good uh, technical skills are good but one of the catalysts for you to fuel that um, growth from this level to the other if we you know soft skill you know not soft skill at your own peril so you walk into a meeting with investors then uh, you manifest your your pride your arrogance you know and before you know it they cancel everything i have seen that so we are just comparing we have hard skills and we have the soft skills hard skill 
anything that can be taught in a classroom. You know, hacking, what? They can be trained. And with time, you can become maybe an expert in an area. But when you come to the soft skill, these are those to, to personal traits, to habits. So I know each one of us in this call, there's one habit that you have. It is only you at God who knows. And you shall go with that secret to the grave. That one I am saying uh, without shadow of doubt, and people can draw stones. Uh, uh, there's no problem with that. So these are the personal traits, uh, and some of these uh, secrets, they, they may overflow into our working environment, and they affect how we interact. Also, another thing, um, you'll be surprised. We've been studying about finances, about money, but you will be very surprised that money has everything to do with your mind. The Psychology of Money. There's a very good book that you can check it out. The Psychology of Money. You will have technical skills. You'll be the best in this and that programming. But now you will always be broke because money is in the mind. Some of us, you are brought up with scarcity uh, mentality. So any little money that you get, uh, you cannot invest that money. I have to digress just a little bit because it is also related. So it is a soft skill, even money, accumulation of wealth, you know, it is a soft skill. And at the end of it, if the career that, like cyber and IT, if there's no evidence of growth in terms of finances, as you continue to grow, then you might be wasting your time because at the end of it, no one, um, no one hates to have some, some finances in their pocket. But remember uh, that anything to do with finances is in the mind. And we are talking on soft skill. Some of us, because of those personal traits, that is why money rejects us. So you try this, you get money before you know it, it is finished, then you get back to cycle, you get back to cycle. And it affects your growth uh, momentum. Uh, also, some of the indicators that you really need to work on your soft skill, like me, we are sharing here. It is not like I am now teaching you. No, even me, I'm learning as we share this. Because I am, I'm not yet there. So if Let's say you have a business and you have low client retention rate. It means you need to check inside of yourself. Where is the problem? I remember some years back, some customers, we, we lost some customers. And uh, looking back, I, I, I can see myself the way I was those years. Yeah, I'm not afraid to, to say that. Sometimes I would get angry and uh, tell the customer, go to hell. Because they have been, you know, they have delayed to make the payment, yet you have worked. Sometimes you have supplied uh, hardware, then the customers delays to make payments. Sometimes maybe even like some of us here, your salaries are delayed, then uh, you run all over. So when you look back and when you look at yourself now, there's evidence of growth. So number two, you are frequently late for meetings. So do you struggle to meet your deadlines? So some of us, we are getting into the career. Some of us, we are on a trajectory, growth. And if you cannot be able to meet your deadlines, like now we do reports, we have an investor, want to know uh, this young man the innovation we need to meet the young person update the investor base customers so we we have deadlines then meetings so if you are still struggling with the issue of meetings time make sure that this year just evaluate yourself that is a soft skill it is there's no cause that you need to attend it's just you inside of you there's a problem so you fail to grow um, what is your professional network in cybersecurity? 
you avoid networking opportunities. I know, like, few years I used to avoid networking because of the introvert uh, nature. So I just used to stay in the house, in the machine, uh, learn Linux, tools, all these things. But now I came to realize that um, it is to my disadvantage. Some of us, um, what is your professional network value? Do you have people within the industry, within cybersecurity, within IT? Do you have people, you know? Do you, have you developed, have you taken time? Or you make or you get into these networks on the basis of a reward that you are going to get. And one person I want to comment is uh, Jones. He has, uh, I've observed him for some time, and he has really, really tried and even challenged me. He is out there reaching out to other people, reaching to other communities, reaching out. That is very commendable. Because sometimes this life is cruel. And if you think that um, things will just be there, they come, you know, uh, take this, uh, come, take job. That job, even where you are, many people want that job and they want you to be fired. So you, you have also to develop that mindset of fighting, fighting. But the most important, grow your network, your professional network. It will get to a point where um, that will be your capital. That will be your capital to the next level. Someone will want to hire you and they will tap into your networks and they will ask us, do you know Mike? And just one word, just one word. If you don't believe, wait for the next few years. Just one word, for instance, from let's say Dr. Bright. And don't say I'm praising him, but it's just the reality. It will get to a point where just maybe one word from him does it. They don't even need to do some background check. One word from Mike. They don't, they don't even have to go background, the referees, just one word. Because this person has worked in integrity. This person has sustained growth. And sustaining growth is, is hard. And the main catalyst is the soft skill. So soft skill, soft skill, soft skill. So most of us will come to take up the soft skill seriously when we are at 40, when we are at 50. And that's why you will think that life sometimes is unfair when you look at some people. But it's only that they have invested in themselves. So why do you need this in 21st century? So the workplace in this era is interpersonal. So you need to know how to listen. Some of us, we are so stinking when it comes to listening. We listen so that we can respond. And this is one of the struggles that we have identified. The most mentees that we are guiding. You are here, you are starting in your career. Learn how to listen. You may think it's a very easy thing. Learn how to listen. Because if you are, let's say, extrovert, extrovert, you want to speak, you want to, you have an idea, Metasploit now, uh -huh. they have new module, they have new uh -huh, auxiliary, you know, you want to share, you want to shine. So what happens is that um, um, you, you lose on the part of listening. So do not listen with a view of responding. Listen to be able to understand. What is this person saying? It looks like a very small thing, but as you keep growing, getting into leadership, it will come out very practical for you. Are you a good listener? There's a CEO, a former, I think uh, he is now a CEO at Unga, Unga Group. He's a young person, I think that is, and he is the managing director. I also follow him, and uh, he is a very good listener. So I think he used to work in another organization last year. He was an MD at uh, one of the organizations. And when he was leaving, uh, members of staff were crying all over because he's an active listener. He listens. It doesn't matter what level you are. I have seen in organizations 
we have gone to banks, we have gone to this. And you can see um, how most of interns are mistreated. So if you are in charge of a department, for instance, please treat your interns, the attaches, the people that you are mentoring, the proteges, treat them with respect. Even you, is only that someone gave you an opportunity. Otherwise, you could not even be there. Someone believed in you. So try to also believe in these young people. Like now, this mentorship, the, the 100 days, is a very good initiative. Because what we are trying to do, we are trying to show them, yeah, we have given you an opportunity. It is possible. And all that most of our young people, all they need is just to be given an opportunity. Where, you, where we used to have an office, we had to take another bigger space so that we can accommodate a large number of young people because all the time young people are saying oh i have this but i don't know i don't have somewhere to work for. i have this so we had to make some sacrifice so even you someone sacrificed for you so you just ought to do that but learn how to how to listen to these people the future workplace will rely on the soft skill, the automation, artificial intelligence, all things, metaverse, all these things that we are, we are seeing coming up. Um, <clears throat> advances in technology will cause tasks that require hard skill to decline. So the hard skill will decline, and which may now makes the soft skill to be the key. So someone will headhunt you. They may not even look at your CV, but they'll just have a conversation for two minutes. And what they are trying to assess and evaluate is your level of problem solving. How much skill do you have when it comes to solving a problem? How much of a critical thinker are you? And most of these, all these soft skills, they have a measure of value. You can, be able, you can be able to evaluate them. You can be able to measure. You can be able to sit down, look at problem solving, then evaluate and measure where you are in regard to that specific soft skill when it comes to drop uh, for instance the problem solving you can look at yourself then you can look at the problem solving as a skill then you can analyze on an on a daily basis how much problems do you solve and again some of these things uh they also overflow to life that's why you know you can see many many young people killing their spouses because a small challenge they do not know how to solve they are not critical thinkers they do not know how to talk to people and that's it and the young people maybe who are starting in their career uh, in this call if you have this attitude i don't care you know it is my life eh? You, you, you see, uh, we will give you some years, then you will learn the hard way. Because one thing that you'll come to understand, for instance, um, you take an example of, of our brother Lab. He is good in, um, let's say, acting directory. He's good in ethical hacking. So you'll see many young people, they want to be like him in, in three months' time. But I remember we started, I think, 2012 or 2013. Kept growing, kept growing, kept growing, kept growing until where he is now. So if you are a young person and you think you do not need to be told, you are just a bomb that is waiting to explode. Again, I have seen young people destroy themselves because of lack of the soft skill. You get into an organization immediately after graduation. You are getting paid a good amount of money. Then you start dating every lady in that in that company. So if you are starting in the in this industry, um, these are some of the traits that you need to be very very sensitive. You need to be very sensitive, and soft skill will increase your productivity. So, for instance, if let's say you have anger issue, how do you sort out that anger issue? How is it going to affect your productivity? 
someone offered you in the morning, then during the entire day, uh, you will not talk to anyone else within the organization. So what will happen is that you will start to build a, a pressure inside of you. And before you know it, even it can result into, into ailments. Yeah. <clears throat> so uh, we are going well. We just have a few. Um, so these are the, the, the 10 uh, soft skills according to the World Economic Forum the 2022, they were having some outlook. I've been researching on a few of them. And we may not go like all of them. We are going to zoom on the emotional intelligence. But of course, here they are, analytical thinking, um, critical thinking and innovation. So we have so many young people, uh, but when you look at the, 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 the rate of innovation, somehow it does not commence with the level of skills that we have. So somehow, the skills that we have should also translate into some level of innovation. Using tools is okay, but again, challenging ourselves to also build some utilities, some automation, some scriptings, it also add value. Active learning and learning strategies. So are you learning all the time? Learning all the time. And somehow it is a guided learning. You cannot, for instance, graduate, then immediately you grasp Metasploit, you grasp um, Kali, you, you grasp uh, CentOS, you, 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 you know how to use Bar, you know how to use um, you know, all these tools within one month. That is not possible. So what you need to do sometimes, you also need to be patient with yourself. So don't be be too hard on yourself. Just pick one thing, learn it. Eventually, you are going to be good in that one thing. Don't be like you want to be known the, the geek in everything, everything. You know, when you come to database, I'm the geek. When you come, okay, there's database. So there's the aspect of configuring databases and managing database. There's aspect of security in database and this aspect of forensic in database. You, can't you just, you know, take one where you feel it's possible. I have seen people struggle with coding, struggle with coding. It is not a must that you, you know, you, you, you baptize yourself in coding. If it does not enter, just forget about it. Do what you can be able to manage. Because what you do is that you will do you will, you will give us um, very awkward results. So creativity, of course, and it will go hand in hand with an innovation. Um, uh, critical thinking, then complex problem solving. We have said that in 21st century, these are some of the basic elements if you have to differentiate yourself in the industry. You may look again and don't feel bad. Let me use um, Dr. Bright because I have seen him grow. I have seen him grow, you know. So you may think he is favored when he is speaking in conferences all over. No, he has grown. He has allowed himself to grow. <clears throat> and even if you feel bad, there's nothing you can do about it because he has differentiated himself. And that is why people can be able to identify with him. So the best thing that you can do is to tell him, brother, we go, yeah, yeah, you are doing it, you are doing it. Then pick one area, pick one area. For instance, uh, like my, 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 my bro, Mike, Mike Kamel, and it comes to cryptography. I don't have to stress so much. I just need to, to know how to, uh, to speak to him. We complement each other. And it does not hurt. Yeah. Emotional leadership and social influence. So all of us, eventually, we are going to be leaders. So whether we have just graduated, whether we are now working, whether we are transiting through career, our ultimate goal is we are going to lead. You may not believe it now, but eventually, 
First, you must know how to lead yourself. If you do not have self-control, you, you do not know how to lead yourself. There's a, there's, there's a case that was shared last week. Uh, one of the guys working in one of the corporate, and he went to, <coughs> uh, to make some marriages in Mombasa. And before he knew it, he lost uh, close to 600,000. And this is a young person, actually uh, around that. So you can imagine 600,000, just like that. And it was January, just like that. So leadership starts with you leading yourself first. Then uh, leading your own family. For us who are married, read your own family. If I don't care how much, how much uh, progress you are making out there in the industry, if you mistreat your wife or your husband or your child, you are just useless. So if you know, if you know that you are struggling with leading your own family, just make sure that understand these sort of skills. Maybe you are your arrogance, your pride, you don't know how to respond, maybe to your spouse or something like that. Then after that, what happens is that it overflows to our organization. So you will become successful in leading that organization, the team, the department that has been given unto you. Like for instance, on my case, the association, we have never been trained by anyone to lead people. Sometimes we, we struggled for a long time until we had to sign up for some courses in leading people because you want people to see to be to, to, to see the things from your perspective, but they have their own perspective. But one thing that I am happy is that it has helped us also to grow in the dimensions of leadership. So each one of us know that you are a leader, whether you believe it or not. And you ought first to lead yourself. And if you want to succeed in leading yourself, you must grasp the soft skill part of you. That will really help you. The other one is emotional intelligence. So we are going to zoom on uh, emotional intelligence. Then there's reasoning, problem solving and ideation. We need ideas. Some of us, we have a problem with procrastination. You have built a data center and you are still sleeping. You have built a sock. Open source, you figure out in your head, in your mind. But actualization is the problem. So procrastination, you have like to fight. It's a giant. You have to really fight. You have to fight. And many of us, um, somehow, it is not that we are poor. It's only that we are procrastinating a lot. You want you you really feel you know that you're gonna do that interview with with let's say with with the citizen do, you know go and do it do, don't care what people speak or what they say so we are also we, we are trying to please other people and what you need to do is just ensure that whatever we are doing and whatever level we are um, as long as we draw some fulfillment from that just do it step up so we have so much, so many people with potentials, but they are still locked, you know, in um, comfort. And one of the elements is procrastination. If there's an injection that people can be injected to kick out procrastination, then I can advocate the government to just provide it for free. People are injected, injected, anti-procrastination. Even now, I'm sure 90% of us here, there's something you have been procrastinating from January until now. You want to do it, uh -huh. you want to do it, <clears throat> you are just doing it on your mind. Especially when it comes to <clears throat> reports, uh, writing, it becomes a problem. You write reports in your head, you write reports in your head, but actualizing the report, it becomes a problem. Uh, we continue. So when you look at the emotional intelligence, this is the EQ. Then you also have IQ. So IQ is your intellectual capacity. EQ is your level, your, your ability to understand. Pay attention. Your ability to understand other people. Then what motivates them 
and how to work cooperatively with them. Three things. How do you understand other people? Other people in your own house. Remember we have said, if you succeed in the corporate and you fail in your own house, sometimes marriage can fail or something like that. But if, if, if really you know that you are the one making it fail, then I can say, shame on you. <clears throat> and you have to forgive me and that. And someone can throw stones. So you have to understand other people. Do you understand other people? People have issues. Like now, another person was to, there's something you want to do, some presentations to a potential customer. And I was so much ready. This, is, this was last week. I had made sure, set up on the cloud, platforms, one, two, three. Then, uh, just a day before, the person calls and says, okay, well, uh, I have this and this. You know, my wife is going through this and this. I just ask you to suspend that, you know. And because I have learned emotional intelligence, immediately I told him, don't over explain yourself. That's it. But most of us, we are selfish. It is just our own interest. It's about ourselves. It's about our own interest. Where we work. What is the motive of your heart? Like now, I know <clears throat> the motive of our hearts as we mentor people within this uh, uh, specific conclave is that people will be able to grow. So that in the next two, three years, uh, we, we, there's evidence of growth. We have speakers for conferences. We have people to be interviewed in the media. Not the same faces, not the same people at least we have some young people coming up and that is the encouragement the challenge that we want to give ourselves so understand how well do you understand other people people some people have lost their loved ones then they are unable to deliver within your department how 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 much empathetic are you and that is you know i know many people fail here what motivates them so some people, they are motivated by their own selfish interest. Other people are motivated to see that maybe the company grows. And especially those who, who, who runs and manage companies. This is one of the most difficult part. Some people come, uh, for them is about just to learn a few tricks and, 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 you know, zoom out, go and get a bigger job. So it, it is... There's a challenge when it comes here. What, what motivates the other, the other person? And also, how to work cooperatively with them. How well do you work with other people, with your teams? Do you motivate them? When someone is down, when we, we have lost our loved ones, because remember, we are just, we are human beings, and we should not lose the humanity in us. In as much we grow up to what level, it does not matter. So the first one, there are five major categories. The first one is self-awareness. It is not possible to understand people. It is not possible to even work together. If you yourself, you are not self-aware. Are you aware of yourself? Have you recognized your emotions within you? When does, why do people kill? Jealous, jealous is an emotion. So you see someone driving a good car and you feel this person graduated after me and how comes they are driving a, a good car? This person does not know uh, programming and how comes they, they are progressing in one, two, three. <clears throat> so the emotion, the ability to manage your emotions, self-aware. Let us be self-aware. Let us be aware of ourselves, you know. Developing self-awareness requires tuning into your true feelings. And that is where confidence comes from. So most of us, we are not even confident. You need to step out there. You lead yourself. Go for that interview. You know, if it is a project, government, maybe government project or something like that, and the company is competing, a huge 
and big companies challenge yourself you can also do it you know like one of the challenge that we face because when we go to make presentations in organizations most of the board members are old people and sometimes they may look down they think this is just a young man what is he telling us we have been here for a long time we know our staff so that has been one of the challenge so self-awareness then you need to have self-regulation so you understand that you have a certain weakness so you shout um you know you you you, you are the one you, you 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 don't have you are not empathetic so what you do is that you try to um you try to listen at that emotion so when that emotion is coming there's a way that you can be able to hold back so sometimes someone can come or fed you then what you do is that at times you just walk away but because of our ego you don't your ego is on the line i have seen this a few years ago online you want to prove that you know you are the one huh? you know how terminus all that then you speak many things so self-regulations and self-regulation cannot come if you're not still aware like now you know why are you in cyber security in the first place uh -huh. maybe your parents told you maybe it is the next big thing maybe there are there money there but what sort of impact are you going to make uh, when you are uh, in your 70s and you look back are you going to be proud are you going to live in employment and employment is not that for up to maybe when you are 60 70 do you have an exit plan no motivation to motivate yourself for any achievement requires uh, clear goals that is straightforward uh, <clears throat> of course things to do with goals you know that is a whole topic on its own empathy uh, this is one of the the the, the um, one of the critical success factors being empathetic the ability to recognize how people feel is important to success in your life and career so developing others if for instance where you are now you are just out of the college or you are just also growing in your career how many people have you developed how many people can you just look at in the next two years and be proud because one thing is that um, we shall we are not here for a long time just a few years and we exit so you need to multiply yourself multiply yourself let us see another jones coming out of kenyatta university you know even talking the way you talk even presenting the way you present let us see many mike mike's mike's lowlands lowlands let us see many of them sprouting all over multiply yourself so that if by by anything you are not there you are not even around then you 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 have already raised other young people like what we are doing now so how many people are you going to develop in the next few years and you cannot develop if you still feel jealous you are insecure insecurity comes from lack of self-awareness because if you just know where you are going that's it you have no business competing with uh Akina Jones and others because you already know and what you can do is just you just need to complement so you are not you know um you are not an endangered species you know exactly where you are going that's it soft skill the social skill now the development of good interpersonal skill interpersonal skill social don't say that you are introvert yes you are introvert but how does it affect your productivity within the organization within the cyber security within the it how does it affect how does it affect yeah. so we are almost writing up in the next few minutes so this is just a representation of what we have shared so emotional intelligence has the interpersonal interpersonal is between you and other people 
intra is you. So some of us, we are good at interpersonal, social awareness, relationship management. So there are people who do not know how to manage relationships. You will never ever, again, I use Dr. Bright, you will never ever hear me speak anything against, against him. Never. And many people have come, oh, you know, I tell them, shut, shut your mouth. Because if you speak against someone who is doing well, do you, do you even expect that you will also do well in the first place? And this is something that we need uh, us as young people to understand. When you, you sit down, you, you dress down people. And some of them are, are doing well than you. What happens is that you are already short-circuiting yourself because life is spiritual. Yeah. If you hate success, you will never ever succeed. Never. If you hate entrepreneurship, you will never ever run even a kiosk. Never. Take that to the bank. So you have to value relationships. We have to value relationships. This one, I don't know how we can say it, but we have to value relationships. So you think that now you know Metasport. You, you, you are the only one who, you, you, everyone else is an idiot. And yet we need each others. We need each others. We need each others. For you, there, there are times that you need someone to just recommend you, say that, yes, I know him, that's it. But imagine, if you asked about someone else, what report can you give? Oh, no, eh. no, no, just, you know, love each other, guys. Love each other. Because you can be good in technical skill, right. You can be good in soft skill, right. But now, when it comes to loving other people, because that is also another dimension, it becomes a problem. And I have told you, life is spiritual. There are things that you cannot go beyond if you do not love. If you are the person who sit down, dress down any other person there, like now we have people that we look up to, we will never ever, you know, we will never ever overtake them. You can take that to the bank. We may overtake them in terms of finances, but, you know, career-wise, skill-wise, uh, experience-wise, they are ahead of us. It doesn't matter. It doesn't matter who you are. It doesn't matter who, I mean, it, it doesn't matter. And this is where mentors come. Like now there are people, some of my mentors, when I go to them, to see them, I don't even speak anything. I don't know anything when I'm with them. So I have seen young people that are also mentally, when we are together, they are just talking, talking, you know, showing how they know this and that. They know, no, that is not wisdom. That is not wisdom. That is not wisdom. I know someone is being helped just by that. So that is not wisdom. So there are people that understand. There are people who will always be ahead of you. We are not competing. You are competing against yourself. So you, 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 you are out of the 10 soft skill. You can see that you are lacking in two. Let that be the competition. So when you look at problem solving, there's a challenge. Focus, zoom on that. Zoom on soft, zoom on the problem solving, zoom on problem solving, regardless of whatever is happening. So um, we have seen behaviors, self-management, and self-performance. So the emotional intelligence we require intra and inter. So of course, there are some tools that you can use online um, where you can just assess yourself, you can track your productivity. You can also do some personality assessment um, so this is a very good assessment uh, test that I usually take uh, after about three months because I can. I also want to, to you know, to track that I'm, I'm doing the right thing and I'm also growing. Um, and the last one is on the part of uh, maximizing our potential. So soft skill will come to help us grow at personal level. So it will increase our confidence. So some of us, it is confidence that is making you not to get that project, not even to get into that partnership. 
not even to get into that next level of promotion, for instance. So soft skill will help you in terms of personal growth. Academics, we cannot uh, overemphasize. So after you have done all that, uh, you'll be able to learn with a focus. So don't just jump into offensive security, what, what professional, because you want to be also the first person in Kenya to have done the certificate. That shows this lack of wisdom, you know. Before you jump into something, just analyze. The social, this is where we have talk, talked of uh, the networks. I have seen some wealthy people, they work like in competing businesses, but they, 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 they run their own social platforms, like social activities together, um, you know. We can learn something from such people. And in the next few years, you know, uh, we, we shall be a family in cybersecurity, in IT. There are those who have already gone ahead of us. They have done some things accurately. Uh, they have maybe done other things not very well. Um, so we are the one who are taking up the mantles. Our time is coming. We are taking up the mantles. And it is, it is, it is real, it is the truth. But now, are we prepared? So whatever level you are, you are, in, you are in school, start, this is the best time to recalibrate your mind. So that, understand yourself, soft skill. Know that even as you, you, you partake of the Linux course, then um, it will be complemented by a soft skill. It is possible to get a job immediately after the university. But one of the key elements that will help you is your ability to be aware of yourself, which will build confidence in you. And of course, this will help you um, in terms of the soft skill. So most of the time when we attend the interviews, when we are conducting some interviews, you may focus a lot on the soft skill part of it. Because exams, Kenyans, we are good. We can cram and you can pass any type of exam. But you cannot cram soft skill. We will just look at you. Uh -huh. You want this, this, this. Then you want to know what is your motive? What is hidden in your heart? Okay. What is hidden in your heart? For instance, allow me to use the association because we are part of it. Uh, <clears throat> many people would think, okay, these people are here so that it will grow. They make some money. They make this. No. We have to keep, as, as leaders in that association, we have to keep vetting our hearts. Are our hearts right? Can we negotiate? I remember the last elections, we were approached somewhere within the elections, you know, to assist one, two, three, but we refused. Because we know we are not there so that we can generate wealth. And if we are there and we do that, then we are going to mislead people. And these are not our people. These are people who belong to God. It's God who can repay. So, um, so it will help you. It will help you to keep your heart in check. Your heart in check. As you work in that company, um, do not be the person who is always gossiping about your boss. Your boss goes through a lot of sacrifices. Sometimes they are, you know, they, they, they want to come and, you know, um, take up everything. And then you are the person after the job. You are gossiping about the other person. You are, uh, those shoes, uh, the, the trouser. You see, guys, let us grow up. In the organizations, let us just portray growth. At growth, you cannot say that I have grown. You manifest the growth. We see. When we look at you, we see growth. Even the way you, you know, the, the way you, you may not have uh, a lot of finances. Even the way you, um, what you wear, your presentation, how presentable are you? There's a way, there's some level of confidence that we can see when we look uh, at you. And imagine, if you are confident, imagine how many people, you have no idea how many people that you are going to inspire. Personally, 
I follow uh, Boniface Mwangi. I know most of us know him. Yeah, we may say so many things about him. But one thing I like about Boni is the courage, the level of courage. He can do anything at any time, anywhere, as long as he feels this is not right. And it has also helped him because there's no way someone can harass me in the public and just keep quiet. Even when using Matatu, I have spoken and um, um, it has helped some people, even as some men just keep quiet. So please, whatever, wh wherever you are, the level that you are, whether you are just starting in cybersecurity, um, in IT, I usually refer those as they are just complementary. Uh, if you are, let's say, you have grown a few years, if let's say you are now transiting through different dimensions of growth, please let us just grasp this soft skill. And the last one is professional. You will be more strategic in developing your skills, not only for employability, but also uh, to be valued. There are the, a few years from now, most of us in this call will be so much valued and so much valuable. You will not even be working like daily in an organization. You will be working on, you know, uh, you are hired on, 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 on specific projects because of the value that you have added in yourself. So let us, guys, in the next five years, in the next 10 years, let us just build so much capacity in us. Let us build these intrapersonal skills. Let us build these intrapersonal skills. So that in 10 years to come, we shall be somewhere. So I think with that, I am so happy. Uh, and I thank you very much um, for taking time to just listen. It is an honor again and a privilege. So that is the end of my presentation. And I take back to, to our moderator. In case someone has a question, we can just be able to add. Thank you and God bless you. Thank you, Wana Frederick. That was an interesting presentation and a, a very nice one as for <clears throat> as compared to what we've been doing uh, for the previous eight days. Um, I'd like to open the floor to any questions for Fred uh, based on the presentation that you've just seen. Feel free to unmute your, your mic and just ask. Or if you don't want to ask, you can uh, put a, a question on the chat and I can try and relate to Mr. Frederick. If there are no questions, uh, maybe I can ask uh, Fred a question or two, or maybe even a comment based on what we've just had. Uh, Fred, you, you, you brought up a very uh, uh, touchy topic for me in terms of um, time management and uh, keeping time. So like we as Kenyans have a very bad culture in not respecting people's time. And when I've been operating with people now outside of the country, and it, it's it's a big issue that I've also heard them complain about. And I really like your model at the institution where you say, if you're five minutes late, you're not attending. It will definitely build the culture that is needed for time management. So kudos to you on that one. Uh, the, other, the other one is more of a question, but not based on the exact uh, topics that were discussed. I noticed you had Windows 7 on your machine. Any particular reason why you're still running uh, Windows 7 on your machine? <laughs> uh, well, the, the main reason is that, um, so this machine, I use it for uh, for light uh, activities like presentations and stuff. And also, uh, when it comes to Windows, I don't want so much complication. So I just, I love the way it is just simple and, uh, you know, we don't want complication. As you age, you don't want, you just want to press the comes, press the comes. Thank you. Uh, any questions from the audience? Yes, I have a question.
Yes, please go ahead. Uh, so it relates with uh, the interaction and when it comes to professional interactions and debates that uh, I've noticed over a period of time, uh, either when it comes to uh, interaction again, uh, uh, interaction with professionals and interaction with the greater public. Now, when it comes to debates and when it comes to conversations around a specific topic, uh, we usually tend to get into a situation where you don't want to provoke maybe somebody who's uh, been in the field or somebody who has authority or power. And when it comes to such conversations, you might find there could be conflicts, either personal conflicts. And you find that these guys do not agree with other people not because of professional ideology, but based on uh, personal issues. And they tend to make people, for example, if you am associated with Fred, and maybe Fred is not uh, a, a friend or does not have a, a good relationship with another person, say person X. Due to that, and due to maybe somebody knowing that I'm a friend of Fred, they might, uh, if I do, if there's an opportunity and I want to get help from person X, that person will try to sabotage it or that person will, will not be happy enough to uh, assist you or to guide you in, in order to, or to be involved in trying to uh, make a new progress in your area or whatever you want to progress in. So when it comes to such uh, issues, personal issues, for example, when it comes to siding, how would one approach that? And, uh, and specifically when you're talking in the field of cyber security, because when it comes to the industry itself, you'll find that there are guys who want to work in silos, do, do not want opinions of others. And there are other guys who, when you try to point out that this could be an issue, this could be something that you could handle it differently. They might find you as challenge them, challenging them, not, not them as not the idea or the issues, but them as individuals. And that is what I usually see, especially when it comes to po the politics within the industry, like uh, the environment and the people, the expertise, the private entities, and some of officials, some of the officials when it comes to the government and they prefer they work in their own silos and the industry works in their own silos. And when it comes to a synergy of uh, expertise or disco, uh, a, a discord of ideas, it's not really entertained. How does one go, uh, how does one uh, try to have that be remedied, especially when it comes to an individual who has either interacted with both A very good question <clears throat> and a very practical scenario. Um, so as we have shared, um, you know, it goes along um, and it has everything to do with your intrapersonal and also interpersonal. But at a personal level, um, I usually uh, handle that uh, from a point or perspective of growth and maturity. For instance, a few years ago, I would look at something and judge it from, you know, or judge the person who is sharing or saying that, and judge, ju judge that thing that he is sharing because it is that person sharing. And I don't feel like, you know, I can get along with him or her. But now, over time, um, I have come to realize that the more I keep growing, um, the more I ignore those things. For instance, um, they are, they are, for, for instance, take an example of, um, of a person who has been in industry for, let's say, 10, 15 years. Uh, so there's a level of respect, personally, that I have for them. So regardless of, of what I feel about what they have shared, for instance, take an example of um, 
of let's say George George Jorogi, um, um, the the forensic uh, the forensic uh, leader. So George to me is a senior is a senior person to me. We also do forensics. We also do this. We also so there are things that George can share. Go out there challenging him one on one because I have a level of respect. And at times, out of experience, you may go trying to correct him, and he may misinterpret that as, as, as arrogance or pride. And this is one thing that many upcoming young people um, in the industry need to be trained. For instance, take an example of, 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 of our ICT minister. We can disagree, we can agree to disagree. But he has been there in IT for many years and it is a reality. So he has maybe misled government on some projects on this and this. But that does not take away the authority that he has in, let's say, in IT or in this and this. Because if you look at him, you will realize that he has, he was the, the, the he is founded, I think, uh, Wananchi or something like that. And NG Online opened up the internet space, opened up the ISP space. So this is someone who has an honor. And even the Bible says that those who deserve honor, they, ju they just be given double honor. So it is a, a subject about um, maturity and growth. And sometimes when I see people, there were, there were times that they used to discuss us, you know, to discuss us, we do this, we do that. And what I came to um, to decide on, just to give them time. So when they grow, for instance, one of my mentor is 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 in the in the in the in the cyber security. So at one area, I might be very good than him, but you will never see me. Uh, let's say we go to a conference, then I'm disagreeing with him openly. It is more of an honor, it is more of growth, it is more of maturity. At most of politics will always be there, especially the corporate world. And you really have to navigate through wisdom. So for me, at personal level, um, I take it as maturity. So the more you keep maturing, maybe a few years ago, we could not sit down, let's say with maybe Ian, for instance, because I thought Ian look at me from a, a different perspective but we have grown you know beyond that childishness and one of the reason why people stagnate is lack of growth that childishness so when i see an opportunity i cannot connect for instance um i can see tabi or, or or tracy because we had some disagreement with tracy a few years ago you know, and I have not grown, you know, over that. So I want to encourage ourselves, let us grow, let us mature, so that we can be able to take the industry together forward as a team and in unity. Whether people look at you like you are the best, you are not the best, just have boundaries. If someone is ahead of you, if someone is, let's say, uh, someone like Mike, is ahead of you, he has taught some of us here. That that is the, that is the truth, and it will never change. So even if you you get to a point where you can hack even 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 uh, aircrafts, the truth remains that he has taught you. That that's it. So when you approach him, when you meet, when you encounter him anywhere, you have to show the respect. You have to honor him. So whether you feel like he doesn't know anything, he mis misinterpret. Even your time will come in that government. Your time will come and you will also be a leader in that same government. And we are going to look at how you are going to perform. I hope I've shared something that makes sense. Yes, we have a final question on that. Yes, Amelie. please go ahead. Yes, so, yes. Uh, now, assuming I want to approach someone like Fred, and I'm a new, I'm somebody new in the field, and I know you for maybe from TV, uh, interviews in TVs, from online interactions, 
how do I make the first approach? For example, if I want to gain some insight from you and you are like a public figure, how, what is the best approach for somebody who's maybe relatively unknown, even somebody who's new in the field, who would want to gain some knowledge and I can be able to identify that this is the person I'd want to learn from. What is the best way I can initiate the first conversation that will, uh, pro will have a higher chance of being successfully, uh, having a successful interaction rather than uh, trying to approach somebody and then becoming a bother in a way that that person sees you as either somebody who just wants to stalk or do anything bad or like uh, somebody who just wants to disturb. What is the best approach that one can do or can make or how is the best way that one can make as the first approach to a mentor or in seeking a mentor? When you identify the mentor and you want to seek an audience with that mentor, what is the best approach one can use? A good question, a very good question and uh, very uh, relevant. Uh, one thing that um, I want to encourage ourselves, if let's say you identify with person X, Y, Z, because you saw them in a conference, uh, you saw them on a TV interview, on newspaper, all those things. So uh, I, I, one thing that maybe I would encourage is you try maybe to follow uh, the person. You can follow them online, try to understand uh, what they post, um, what you are trying to do is you are trying to understand, to internalize that person. So for instance, there's someone that I have been following for a long time. Um, they're in the US. And um, they are one of investors in cybersecurity. And um, I approached them after about one year of following them online, listening to their YouTubes. I, I approached them from a, a point of knowledge on what they like, on how they speak, you no? Know? So when I approached them, they, they did not like, uh, you know, become defensive or something like that. Because I was already like aligned to, to, to them or to whatever they, they do or they like. But now when you come to, let's say, uh, Kenya, our, 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 our own perspective, uh, the key thing that I usually say is respect. You may be very good very, very good and talented in Linux, or even in cyber, you can hack anything. But you have wrong attitude, and that's why today we had the soft skin. So the way you approach the other person, you cannot approach someone like, you know, Mike, like uh, Mike here, or even, let's say, Jones. You cannot just approach them, hi, oh, oh, oh. You see, this is a person who deserves some respect. And we respect people on the basis of sacrifices. So they have paid some sacrifice. They have paid some price for even to appear on that TV. So we want to launch out within three months. We want to be on TV. So if you want to approach someone, the key element is respect. So there's a way that you cannot just address. For instance, I rarely request for business cards in a conference. Rarely, you know, I have seen young people, oh, give me your card, give me your number. You see, you don't do that. That shows you, 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 are, you don't have manners. I cannot walk to a senior person in a conference just because I, I admire them and tell them, oh, I want you to be a mentor, to be my mentor. That is lack of respect. And these are things that we need to understand. For instance, I cannot walk to the MD of Serian. Give me your card or oh, give me your email. No. You see, I have to follow them. Also trusting in God that one day we shall come together. We shall encounter each other one day. For instance, someone like George, data handlers, you, can, you cannot meet him on the street. Oh, George, give me your card. You must demonstrate some level of, 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 of respect understand as a young person how to draft a professional email have someone accountable said email to that person first how is this email you cannot tell her, how are you dear oh i saw you on tv you are doing good no respect first 
On the other side, the one who is being approached, we also need to adopt a level of humility. And let me tell you guys, you need to be honest with yourself. Greatness is expensive. Take that to the bank. There, there are people I meet when I'm using Matatu and they say, ah, you still use Matatu. <clears throat> I saw you on Citizen and I'm wondering like, really? So you need to adopt something called humility. You shall learn it. If you don't have humility, you are going to be so arrogant that no one also open that door to allow young people to come to you. Like for instance, uh, for us, you know, they reach out all the time. They reach out all the time. And what we do is that we just ask them, just create time, come to the office. Then when they come to the office, we just interact with them, have some tea. So um, how is you, how is this? How is this? Create that environment. Make it, make it possible, be approachable as well. But the most important thing, on the side of the one who is coming, just have some manners. Let us see that you have grown, you have grown up. Don't start calling someone dear. Don't start saying hi, H-E-Y. That is already a put of hey on LinkedIn. Just say, good afternoon, Mr. So-and-so. Thank you very much for this and this. Don't say hi. <laughs> Someone will not take you serious. And these are, these are the secrets. These are secrets. Life is not so complicated. You just need to know which secrets to apply. Yeah, so which secret to apply. On the other side of the mentor, just have humility. As you keep rising, as you keep getting influence, you are getting influence in the lives of people because you influence people at the heart level. So the more God, and, and, and it is God who gives people influence. So the more God gives you influence over people, the more you become humble. The more you become humble. The more you become humble. And I can guarantee you, you'll be open to be able to assist as many as possible. Thank you. Thank you very much, Mr. Frederick. Uh, I think there's one more question from Mike again uh, on the chat. Uh, are there any books uh, you, you could recommend one to read to uh, improve their self, uh, their, their self improvement, basically? Yeah, I will, uh, I will share with the team uh, on some of the books that personally have also helped me. And also even reading a book is a soft skill because you have to fight, you have to fight procrastination until you develop a discipline uh, of reading a book or two. Also reading books, it helps to build that, uh, the soft skill aspect in you. It really helps. Yeah. Awesome. Uh, any other questions from the audience members that are still in attendance? I can also see another one, <clears throat> someone asking, how can you be confident without it coming across as arrogant? Sometimes I fear I might come across as arrogant when I'm trying to express myself. Wow, that's a very powerful question. Yeah, we, you know, sometimes you can, you can be confident, but some, someone can, misinterpret that as you are being arrogant because we are used to holding back so you don't want people to feel like you know you are pretending you know this and that but you see things like confidence again is somehow is spiritual so you will know the spirit behind and it, you know as human beings we are spiritual so you will know when someone is arrogant again adopt something called respect so you can be confident, but you have respect. So, for instance, trying to respond to a senior person in the industry, uh, in, um, there's a way that you can respond to them, it comes out as arrogance. And there's a way that you can just keep quiet. And there's a way that you can also respond 
and it, it shows that there is confidence. So one thing that you need to, to have is, is respect. So you can, you, can, you can demonstrate confidence, but someone will not, will not misinterpret that as arrogance. Of course, arrogance, you, you will know, you will see. Because someone who is arrogant, you know, they are also keys for, uh, in arrogance. Yeah. Someone who cannot be corrected. So if you cannot be corrected and you claim to be confident, it means you are arrogant. And arrogance and pride, these are two, this is a brother and sister. So if you cannot be corrected, again, if you are not accountable, to anyone can someone now call you and ask you delete what you have posted on facebook uh -huh. because they they see you know they see it from a different perspective and somehow they are seeing it. i have had young people i had to call and tell them whatever you have uh, shared on twitter or facebook just delete and what they do is that they don't ask why that's it respect so what you do is that even as you 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 being mentored, open your heart to be mentored, because the other person need to feel they have an access into your heart. Mentorship is not in the mind; it is in your heart. We will manifestation of growth will come from the heart, will overflow from the heart. So if you are able to open your heart, <clears throat> and and the one one model we have adopted is. Um, we go beyond the normal technical steps. So at times we may have a session with one, one, one on one. Uh, how is your mom been doing? How is your brother? And what you do is because you have created that environment, they can now be able to open up their heart. So it is possible to be confident and arrogant at the same time. It is possible to be confident and not have arrogance. Remember arrogance opposite is humility. So if you are struggling with arrogance, just make sure that you have acquire humility also as a soft skill. Thank you. Uh, thank you very much, uh, Bonafred. Uh, from my side, I actually have a question. Considering uh, presentation is but uh, formulates communication and that sort of uh, comes down, boils down to soft skills, what sort of uh, tips or uh, points can you give to the people who are getting into the industry and may have not yet even experienced their first presentations, but may be coming with a lot of technical backgrounds in their skill sets or in their backpacks? So maybe you can rephrase the question. The question was uh, considering like presentations are a form of communication which boils yeah. down to soft skills so you're transforming mm -hmm. con uh, content from one media to another and you'll, you'll be talking to various types of people as you mentioned you might be talking to c-suits you might be talking to junior staff you could be talking to your fellow uh, peers so what sort of uh, tips can you give uh, individuals who are now getting into the industry with maybe more technical skills and less uh, soft skills, what sort of tips can you give uh, uh, them from what you've shared as well uh, to enhance those uh, presentation skills? Wow, wow. <clears throat> so uh, actually, communication skill is, uh, is a soft skill. And, uh, you know, what, what you need to do is you just need to understand uh, your audience. For instance, if... Uh, of course, if your audience is technical, <clears throat> that there are things that, you know, you just need to understand and you just need to train yourself on how to, to present uh, in confidence, you know, without showing like you are not very sure. <clears throat> because the idea is to show the other person that you are confident in what you are sharing. And... Um, Let's say, you know, you are sharing with your colleagues. Um, you're almost the same level. You, you have to really, um, you have to really have a respect, you know, so that you don't come out as arrogant. And as well, you don't as, uh, look like you don't know what you are, you are also presenting. 
And also when you come now to the management, you really have to be discerned for. You have to understand the language of, of, of leadership, you know? And remember we said you cannot lead if you have not led yourself. So they will listen to you and they will know that this person is arrogant. So if you are presenting, um, let's say for business, just understand, know how to translate the technical lingo to something that can easily be understood. If your audience is the general public, the same thing. If your audience is technical audience, just uh, present something that can really be able to add value to them. So the essence is to add value uh, during your presentation, not to shine or even outshine others, because I have also seen that. So you're presenting so that you can shine, you can show that you know this and that. So these are things that you just build already now. And one of the successful CISOs and CIOs and CTOs are people who have been able to understand the communication part of it. So when they go to the boardroom, they don't take uh, the technical staffs in the boardroom. So they speak the financial language, the risk uh, language, and they also know how to persuasion. There's a way that you can persuade without uh, showing like you are desperate. So there's a way, the persuasion is a skill. So you are going to learn it on how to persuade the management, the board, so that they can approve uh, either a contract or they can approve a budget for your cybersecurity or even IT department. So just understand your audience, know that you can switch in between when it is the public, the general public, and the best platforms to learn are such platforms. Join the association, join Africa Hacon, join all these, all these um, organizations. They give you an opportunity when they are doing their awareness, you can be given an opportunity to uh, partake and to also exercise some of these skills. And someone can be able to correct you. This is not the right thing. This is not how you do it. Like one of us, there was a time I was following something they shared on Twitter. Then I told them, do not overshare, you know, do not overshare. You are one, two, three, you are private, you are whatever. You want to do this, you share. No, just reduce on that. And they, they actually, they have been learning on the same. I hope I've answered it uh, accurately. Yes, thank you. I believe that has added value to our audience members. Uh, anybody else with questions? I'll count down to five. If we don't have more questions in the next five seconds, then I, and I can see that we are right on time. We will close the session. So in five, four, three, two, one, opportunity is gone. Thank you very much, Buona Frederick, for this session and taking time to guide us through your experiences, especially on the soft skills. As mentioned earlier, this is uh, some uh, an area that we all need to work on, whether you're in cybersecurity or not. So definitely worth uh, bringing in this with these sessions that we're currently having. Uh, maybe something we might do in the future is also look into um, the consequences of being in cybersecurity with mental health. Uh, maybe it's a, uh, somebody will talk about it in one of the sessions later on. But for now, Thank you very much. And to the audience members who stayed through the, the session, thank you very much for staying with us to the end. I bid you all a good night and a good evening. Thank you also for the opportunity. Thank you, thank you. Uh, God bless you. So tomorrow we'll have a session, a technical one, on, on is this response forensics. So let us also try just to make time so that we can also learn together. Thank you. Thank you, Fred. We'll definitely look forward to your session tomorrow. Okay. Good night, everyone. Thank you. Bye.